Let us pray. Heavenly and gracious God, may the words of my mouth bring you glory and honor, and may the hearts be warmed that they may know your word and choose to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Christmas Day is behind us, and we are looking forward to a new year. But did you receive the perfect gift from someone you love, or did you expect a gift from someone that exceeds everything that you have ever received before? Christmas has become all about the gifts, material proof of how much we love someone or how much they love us. I'd like for you to take a moment and think of the best gift that you have ever received. Maybe it was a picture of your grandchildren, a diamond sapphire ring that had belonged to your grandmother. Maybe your wife just bought you a candy apple red Harley Davidson Road King. <laughs> or if you live in Sun City, maybe Santa brought you a customized personal transportation vehicle. Or in other words, a golf cart. <laughs> nice, yeah? Yeah. But what about the worst gift that you ever received? I remember mine. It was a bright pink, flow flowing, flowered caftan robe. If you've ever watched Three's, Three's Company, on television back in the late 70s and the 80s, you probably saw the landlord's wife wearing one just like it. Ah, <laughs> uh, Mrs. Roper. The sleeves were long and flowing and it knocked over everything I tried to pick up or it dragged through my coffee. And since it was long and flowing, it got tied up under my feet as I tried to go up and down the stairs and worst of all, it was bright pink floral, big flowers. I never believed in returning gifts because I was sure that the person had spent time thinking just of me and would fulfill my heart's desires. Right? Right. My daughter still laughs on every gift occasion, wondering whether I would be Mrs. Roper. And guess what? I was Mrs. Roper this year. <laughs> and how about giving a gift? Most of the time, we have no idea what someone else needs, wants, what color, what size, or what is the appropriate amount of money to spend. If you have several children and grandchildren, then you know exactly what I am talking about. Maybe you were like Ralphie in the movie The Christmas Story. Ralphie wanted a Red Ryder BB gun, and he just knew if he kept asking for it over and over, he would get it. And he plotted how he could save his family from evil with his trusty Red Rider. He would ride in on his trusted steed, and he'd shoot all the bad guys, and his family would be so thankful. We do that with God. We keep badgering him over and over and plotting for the things that we think we want or we need. And God's response is, you'll shoot your eye out. <laughs> but God does know exactly what we need. He gives us good and perfect gifts. Let's look at his most perfect gift to us. Our scripture this morning is from Luke 2, 
10 through 11. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy for everyone. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born in Bethlehem, the city of David. Do we even realize what a gift this is? If there was ever a gift that was meant to be for everyone, this is it. One size fits all. You can't do without it. And everybody needs one. It is a promised gift. In last week's message, Pastor John used Isaiah 7, 14. The Lord himself will choose the sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and we will call him Emmanuel. God is with us. This morning we continue with Isaiah 9, 6 through 7. For a child is born to us. A son is given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulder. These will be his royal titles, Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. His ever-expanding peaceful government will never end. He will rule forever with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David. The passionate commitment of the Lord Almighty will guarantee this. Now this is great Old Testament stuff. What Isaiah is saying in verse 714 was written 700 years before Christ was born. A thoughtful gift, not one selected on Panic Saturday and grabbing whatever is available and spending way too much. Did you know that there actually is a Panic Saturday? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, John's one of those people in a panic. <laughs> and verses 9, 6 through 7 give us a personalized everlasting gift, a commitment like we have never known before. The gift we are being offered didn't end with the birth of the Christ child. We are offered the gift of salvation, being saved from our own sinful nature with a way for eternal life. John 3.16 tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave us his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. And Ephesians 2.8 and 9, God saved you by his special favor when you believed and you can't take credit for this. This is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things that you have done. Do you have a personal relationship with God? Is it an everyday intimate relationship or do you behave like some of our children do and call home only when you need something? If you think that you can ignore God and he won't see what is really lurking in your heart, or if you think he won't ask you to do something you really don't want to do, if you think that you can wait until the last minute of your life to start this relationship, you're wrong. God knows exactly what is going on, even when we try to shut him out. 
Do you have a personal relationship with God? Having a personal relationship with God means that we have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit. John 14, 16 through 18, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads in all truth. The world at large cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you do because he lives with you now and later will be in you. And verse 26, but when the Father sends the counselor as my representative, and by counselor I mean the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and remind you of everything that I have told you. So who is this Holy Spirit? And what are we to do with him? In the Smart Guide to the Bible, Larry Richards states, he is the one who oversaw the birth of Jesus and who was the source of Jesus' power in ministry. Jesus promised to give the Holy Spirit as a gift to his followers that we too might be empowered spiritually. And Ephesians 1.14, the Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us everything that he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. And the Holy Spirit gives us grace. This is my most perfect gift from God. It came at a time in my life when I was flirting with the world and being coy with God. I came to a low point where only God could have saved me. As I was praying, forgive me as I forgive others. I was hit with the fact that I was truly a sinner and that if God was going to forgive me as I forgave others, I was in big trouble. I prayed for God to cleanse me and to give me a pure heart. And God spoke to me. Maybe not in the voice of man, but in a very audible part of my heart. And what he said is, my grace is sufficient for you. And as I gave myself to him, he said, I know the plans I have for you not for harm, but for good. And he imparted to my heart that he wanted me to go out and tell others of his love, his mercy, and grace. <clears throat> Ephesians 3, 7 and 8. By God's special favor and mighty power, I have been given the privilege of serving him by spreading the good news. Just think. Though I did nothing to deserve it, and though I am the least deserving Christian there is, I was chosen for the special joy of telling the Gentiles about the endless treasures available to them in Christ. What a perfect gift that I have been given. When we receive gifts, what do we do with them? Do we set them up in the closet shelf for a couple years and then put them out for a yard sale? Maybe we re-gift them or we return them to the store for an exchange. I remember some years ago, my brother-in-law received a gift he knew he didn't want so he returned it to the store without really looking at it. What he didn't realize was that the giver of the gift 
had put a $50 bill in the box with the gift, and without opening it, he returned it to the store. How do we feel as we watch our children and our grandchildren play with the box of a gift that we spend our time, effort, and money on, knowing that this is the special gift they want? You know that kind of sick, betrayed feeling? I bet this is exactly how God feels when he sees some of his children reacting to the gifts that he has given us. So this morning, I ask you to receive his gifts. Thank him. Use the gifts. Share them. Add to them. Accept the gifts that God has given us, the fulfilled promises. In a long line of harried shoppers, a man was overheard to say, they should kill the guy that started Christmas. And one wise and godly woman in the line said, they did. They hung him on a cross. That is the real gift of Christmas. Amen.